This sermon is titled Greater Works Than These. Be enriched as you listen. Today on Supernatural Sunday, we believe that you know, God is going to touch our lives in a special way and, and do something powerful uh, by the power of His Holy Spirit. And how, man, how many of us can say amen to that? Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. So let's begin um, by reading the theme of uh, the Supernatural Sunday Sermon. It says, greater works than these. Greater works than these. In John 14 and verse 12, Jesus said this, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. John 14 is a passage where Jesus was encouraging his disciples. He had spoken to them and informed them that my time has come. I will have to suffer a painful death and I will no longer be walking uh, amidst you the way I am right now. And so when the disciples heard this, you know, definitely that, that would have uh, pained their hearts. And so to comfort them, he said different things. Right? He, he, he comforted them and uh, in that he also uh, spoke to them and said, you know what, there's something good that is going to come out of me going away. And that's where he makes this point and he says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also and greater works than these. Meaning, greater works than what the disciples had seen until then. And so he says, look, this is what you can expect. You are going to see greater works and you will do greater works for you believe because I go to my Father. Greater works than these meaning the works that Jesus did. So what were the works that Jesus did? Now Jesus, his ministry in uh, Matthew 4, 23, we see that his ministry was marked by primarily three things that he did. He went preaching, he went teaching, and he also healed. So, you know, the teaching the preaching was accompanied with supernatural demonstrations of the works of God. So he also healed. This is how Jesus ministered place to place. Now, wherever he went, he did those things. And since today is Supernatural Sunday, with an emphasis on the supernatural works of God, now we will talk a little bit more about the ministry of Jesus. Jesus, he performed many miracles. You have the synoptic gospels. As you read them, you know, uh, in sort of synchrony, you see similar events or rather the same events take place where Jesus taught about the kingdom. Jesus ministered to people who came to him. And there were times when sovereignly, you know, Jesus just picked you know, people among the crowd and miracles took place, healings took place, you know, demonstrations of deliverances took place. And that's how you know, he was going about doing things. And the list, if you ask us, of how many miracles did Jesus do? You know, just count for us a couple of healings and a couple of deliverances and you know, other things that Jesus did. If you were to ask that question, yes, we can enlist you know, some that have been recorded for us. There are healings that Jesus did. There was a fever. Peter's mother-in-law was healed. He, he came to know that she was unwell and you know, he just went ahead and healed her. And then there were other instances where people were afflicted you know, on, uh, um, for, with prolonged illnesses. And these people approached Jesus. 
There was a woman who had an issue of blood for several years, 12 years, I think. And she comes up to Jesus. What happened? Jesus healed. So Jesus healed the fever. And somebody here, desperate, with a prolonged illness, Jesus healed. You know, you could just list out healings after healings, miracles after miracles, the works of Jesus. You know, he went about you know, healing those who were blind, those who couldn't see, received sight. And there was a man who was blind from birth, and the Lord Jesus ministers to him, and he's able to see now. So there are several healings that we can look at and see the power of God, see the compassionate heart of God minister to the lives of people. And then you know, there were deliverances. People who were oppressed by the works of the devil. Jesus set them free. You know, a man who was excommunicated, you know, he had uh, multiple demons within him called as legion. And nobody even wanted to go up to him. Jesus was just passing by. Now, he could have uh, gone about doing his own thing, isn't it? But the heart of God with his compassion for such a man as this, Jesus casts out those demons. And then he's a changed man. And the entire city or town is amazed at what the Lord Jesus did. There was a woman who was outside of the covenant, you know, who comes to Jesus. She's a Syrophoenician woman. She comes up to Jesus because her daughter is tormented by evil spirits. So here is a, a, a mother who's desperate for her daughter. And she says, Jesus, you know, heal my daughter. And Jesus speaks theology. You know, the very um, the first time he says, don't you know that I have been sent to the house of Israel or the Jewish people. And this woman says, Jesus, you know, even the dogs eat the crumbs. And Jesus says, wow, I have not seen faith like this. Go, your daughter will be well. And so Jesus delivered the daughter of a woman who was outside of the covenant because of faith. Just because she had faith, he was able to deliver her. And so we can go on and on. You can, we, can, we can just list out uh, all the deliverances that Jesus did. What about resurrections? Resurrections. Oh, we know that Jesus healed Jairus' daughter. He, here's a desperate man. He's saying, Jesus, please come. My daughter is dying. And at some point, you know, people come up to him and, and they say, hey, don't even bother him anymore because she's already gone. But Jesus performs that miracle. He raises a little girl from her deathbed. And that was not all. No, there was a, a lady uh, who was grieving the death of her young son. And Jesus looks at her, has compassion on her, and raises that boy. Jesus raised Lazarus. You know, for You could say, because he, we know that he wept. So he felt the pain of his friends, Mary and Martha. He goes and he raises this man, Lazarus. And these are the works of Jesus. Now, these are the many works of Jesus. Talking about many more miracles and supernatural things that Jesus did. He multiplied. You know, he, he made water. He made wine out of water. Who does that? Jesus walked on the water. Jesus divided a little boy's lunch and he fed the multitudes. These are the miracles that the Lord Jesus was able to perform. And so to comfort his disciples, he's saying, you shall do greater works than these because I go to my father. Okay, so do you think it would comfort them? It should. Because this is what Jesus was referring to, that his disciples will walk in the same mandate as him. And in fact, there are scriptures after scriptures that say that all the people who were brought to him for deliverance, Jesus delivered. In Matthew 8, 16, there were many, in the, when evening had come, they brought to him many 
who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick so you now the list has expanded matthew 15 30 then great multitudes came to him having with them the lame blind mute maimed and many others and they laid them down at jesus' feet and he healed them they had confidence that jesus can do this over and over and over again and so you see that the multitudes are bringing all their sick and laid them laid them down at jesus' feet and even after his resurrection john 21 25 records and there are also many other things that jesus did which if they were written one by one i suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written so there are those many wondrous miracles of god that jesus demonstrated that it's not easy to record every single one of them so when jesus was saying you shall do greater works than these this is what he meant and in his own ministry we see that the works of jesus brought health it brought um deliverance wholeness restoration justice and peace into the lives of the people he destroyed the works of the devil wherever he saw the oppression of the devil whether in the form of sickness whether in the form of you know anything else that the enemy was was doing you now he was there to overcome it and so much more for us now after the cross because jesus has already paid the price for us on the cross of calvary now, all these miracles that we just talked about he was just giving the people a foretaste of what was to come and here we are those who believe in the lord jesus who are partakers of the better covenant of christ and so you know the greater things are meant for us to walk in so this is about the works of jesus now jesus also said that the works that he did are the father's works what are these father's works we'll dwell on that for a little bit In John 1 verse 18 Jesus says or the word says no one has seen God at any time the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father he has declared him so Jesus came to reveal the father to us and that's what the scripture says that Jesus is the revelation of the father He came to show us who the father is, what the father's character is, now what decisions the father would make, now how he would intervene in the lives of people when they came to him with their situations and circumstances. And so Jesus is the one who has declared the father to us. Or the amplified you know, Bible says he interpreted and revealed the father to us and how did he do it you no know, very important key before we go any further into the greater works is you know, john 1:18 says that he was in the bosom of the father or that is translated as in the presence of the father and it's so important for us as believers we trust that god will do great things through our lives and you know there'll be great ministries and we will reach the nations and you know many people will will be saved brought into the kingdom of god and all of that but notice the key that jesus carried in his life he was in the bosom of the father or in the presence of the father and that's the place from where he was able to reveal or interpret the father and that tells us that this morning the way we worship the way we 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 um you know we pressed into the presence of god the way we we wanted to experience the presence of god you know that uh, that becomes the the foundation of a life that will declare the greater works of god and and so you know we must be undergirded with that kind of a passion and a pursuit of god's presence and god's word and from there the way we read you know jesus revealed the father we too will be able to reveal the works of god uh, 
in and through our lives. So the Lord Jesus did the Father's works from the presence of the Father. And you know, we noticed that he was very committed to what the Father sent him to do. So he was committed to his life assignment. In John 5, 17, he says, my Father has been working until now and I have been working. Okay, so think about this. You know, Jesus could have said, okay, Father, you work. I'm going on lunch break or two days vacation you give me. Okay, I'll be back. When I feel better, I'll be back and I'll be part of your, uh, you know, whatever it is, your agenda. But he never said that. He was always ready to do what the Father wanted him to do. And so the Father was working and Jesus says, I'm also working. When he is working, how can I stop I have to be in sync with what the Father is doing. And so, you know, Jesus worked along with the Father. And in John 5, 19 and 20, you know, this morning we were singing. As we were singing, we were saying like, Lord, we want to see you. We want to know you. Okay. And in these verses, we see that the Lord Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father do. The Father shows me. And then I do it. And so that is the manner in which you know, he maintained his relationship with the father. And he went about doing the works of the father. So whatever the father showed him, he did it. You know, Jesus could have healed anyone at the pool of Bethesda. Think about it. But he just went to one paralyzed man who was there for 38 odd years, unable to move. Jesus, why him? Why not all the others? You know, in a, in a sovereign way, God showed Jesus that, hey, this is the person you need to go to, you need to minister to. And similarly, there are many such instances where Jesus decided to do only certain things. Why? Because he saw the Father do it, he did it. So he was very much aligned to what the Father was leading him to do. And this is also so important for us when we talk about doing the works of God, to be aligned with God, to partner with God. In other words, to co-labor with God. You know, we're not doing this work alone. Sorry, you know, none of us are doing any of our ministry alone, but we are co-laboring with God. We are co-laboring with the Godhead. And that's the joy. So, even Jesus understood this. He saw the Father do and he moved in those things. And in this manner, he went about doing the works of the Father. The works of the Father, and this morning, you know, I said that our emphasis is more on the supernatural works, not that teaching and preaching is not important. It very much is important. But since today is Supernatural Sunday, you know, we're focusing on the supernatural demonstrations uh, of God's power. In John 14, 11, Jesus said, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me, for the sake of the works themselves. So, he was asking, he's talking to his disciples, isn't it? And even to his disciples, he says, believe me that I'm in the Father. Why should they believe him? Or else, believe me for the sake of the works themselves. He's talking to them about greater works. He's talking to them about demonstrating the kingdom. And he's saying, believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So it is the Lord Jesus who put an emphasis on the works of the Father. And there are many other passages in which we can look up. John 5, where he says, uh, if I don't do the works of my Father, he says, don't believe me. But because I'm doing the works of the Father. These works are a witness that I am of the Father. And so he placed great importance on the demonstration of the works of the Father, the supernatural works of God. And even at a time when John the Baptist, John the Baptist, the, the, the greatest prophet of the Old Testament as he is called, 
Even he, at one point in his ministry, was confused. Jesus, are you really the one who was to come? And at that point, Jesus says, he, he just demonstrates the kingdom, heals the blind, you know, ministers, uh, uh, healing to many people. And he just tells John's disciples, you know what? This is the answer to your question. John is asking whether I'm the Messiah. Okay, I'm going to do all this. Just go and tell John what you saw. Because these works bear witness that the Lord Jesus is the Messiah or the Son of God. So the works are important. These works signify that the Lord Jesus is the Messiah. And even today, when we see uh, the supernatural works of God taking place in our lives, what it does is that it gives glory to God. It brings honor to God. It points to the Lord Jesus. That he is the Messiah. You and I cannot do it. But he still is alive. And he's doing these works through his people. And this is the mandate of the Lord Jesus. He did the Father's works. Um, co-laboring with the Father. In the presence of the Father. And he placed great importance on these works. And he never wanted these works to stop. No wonder in John 14, 12, he said, you too will continue this mandate and you shall do greater works than these. So the mandate kept being handed to his disciples. First, to those 12 faithful men who followed Jesus everywhere. And they thought, hey, this is nice. We can only, you know, keep listening to Jesus, keep going with him here and there. And finally, you know, this also happens, right? And teachers do this to us. Uh, we just thought we're here to listen. And then suddenly they say, okay, you also do something. Or, you know, you do the practical. And you're like, oh, was this also part of the curriculum? I didn't know that when I was signing up. You know, so it happened to the disciples. And Jesus tells them in Matthew 10, 7 and 8, he tells them, and as you go preach, saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. And so here they are, you know, in a place where they have to practice what Jesus was doing so far. How would they be able to do this? At the very beginning of this passage, uh, we, we see that Jesus gives them the power. Matthew 10, 1, he gives them the power o over, uh, you know, demon spirits. And he sends them out with, you know, that word power in the Greek is exousia, which means authority. He gives them the authority of the kingdom and says, you go, do the works which I did. And so the disciples step out and they are able to do the works that Jesus did. And if that were not enough, you know, he commissions 70 others. Okay, these are not among those 12 uh, disciples. These are some other 70 people, but disciples of Jesus. And he tells them, you go, preach the kingdom and do these works. Okay? And the amazing part, Luke 10 verse 17. These people come back with great joy. And they say, Wow, Jesus, even the demons are subject to, you, to us in your name. So the authority of God is very real. And they experience that you know, in and through their obedience to the commissioning of God. And so the mandate never really stopped. It was the 12 disciples, 70 others, and... Now, then comes the early church. When we read the book of Acts, we're all charged up. It's like, you know, it's like a wildfire, the power of God, the Holy Spirit working through the apostles, working through, uh, you know, all the believers uh, at that time and uh, all these wondrous things taking place, new territories conquered for the kingdom of God. Uh, but, you know, were they able to move in the supernatural? Were they able to see the demonstrations of, of these works of healings, miracles, so on and so forth? Well, very much. Because in Acts 5.12, we see, And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. So, you know, 
the legacy continued they too were able to move with the mandate that jesus gave them they were able to move in signs wonders and miracles and for us today church i just want to remind us that we are here with the same mandate no nothing has changed in what jesus said and he said in john 14:12 he who believes in me the works that i do he will do also and greater works than these he will do because i go to my father do we believe amen we do okay so he who believes in me so can we just say i believe in jesus i believe in jesus okay that's good so the works that jesus did please repeat after me the works that jesus did i will do also and greater works than these i will do amen so can we can we say that with a little more boldness and confidence that hey it's real what i'm saying i know what i'm saying and it's real i believe in jesus and the works that jesus did i will do also and greater works than these i will do because he is with the father amen amen so church just want to encourage us we are called to do the greater works um at this time i'd like to request the worship team to please come and uh, be ready yeah, thank you we've been called to do the greater works and you may ask you know what greater works we've already talked about the amazing works that the lord jesus did and today if they were to take place through you and i for us as a child of god you know it it's nothing alarming in fact that is something expected when we pray for for somebody when we minister there are different ways in which you know a god's supernatural power is ministered especially healing you know god um, uh, brings healing through the power of his word um, and you know if you're ministering god's word uh, into someone's life and that person receives healing you know, amen that's what jesus said we would do you know god can minister when we pray god can minister healing to people or uh, you know when when um, uh, we are worshiping in the presence of god this morning we did that and we are going to do that uh, some more uh, in a in just a bit so even in the presence of god you know in, where there is the anointing of god healings can take place you know with the with the um, gifts of the spirit many a time healings take place so in all these ways when we begin to touch the lives of people you know, rejoice as you see the supernatural works of god taking place or people healed people delivered breakthroughs being released uh, into people's lives and maybe you know some creative ideas you know, that that god gives which uh, might turn the situation totally around for for a person all these things can take place in and through our lives because that's what jesus said that he will do we will do greater works because we believe in him so i just want to dwell on this verse a little bit more uh, and explain the last portion of this where jesus said you will do greater works because i go to my father how are we able to do these greater works have you ever wondered how is it that i can do these greater works well jesus said because i go to my father and because he went to his father what he did is he sent the holy spirit to us amen and now that he sent the holy spirit the believer has the holy spirit you know inside him or her walking with us through our lifetime and the way jesus was with his 12 disciples you know we have jesus said i will send you another comforter but another of the same kind which means that like the lord jesus he sent us 
the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit is with us, we are empowered to do these greater works. So we can flow in the greater works, not because of you know, who we are, but because of the power of the Holy Spirit who works through us. And this was applicable to Jesus as well because you know, we know that yes, Jesus was fully God. Uh, you know, we, we cannot uh, ever claim that Jesus was fully God. And this is the mystery, Jesus was also fully man. Jesus was fully God, fully man. And we read in Luke 4:14 4, that when Jesus came back from the wilderness after his time of uh, fasting, he came back with the power of the Spirit and then began all these supernatural works through the lives of Jesus. So how was Jesus ministering? Many of these supernatural uh, things that took place through his ministry he came back with the power of the Spirit. And that's what Jesus was saying in one breath. You shall do greater works than these because I go to my Father, which implies the Holy Spirit is coming. Amen? And when the Holy Spirit is there, just the way Jesus came back with the power of the Spirit and he ministered. Here we are ministering with the power of the same Holy Spirit and we can expect amazing things to take place three three and a half years of ministry that Jesus had and I you know read to us many deliverances many healings many wonders even books cannot contain it but Jesus is saying it's not going to stop with me there's going to be hundreds and thousands and millions of others of my disciples who will do these greater works. So how many works are we talking about? Countless. Who's going to do these works? You and I. So greater in extent. Greater in quantity. Even unusual things. You know, back in Jesus' times, you know, I don't know if you know, they, they had ways of substituting um, metal. Um, yeah, metal for bone. These days we have that. So I don't, I don't know if Jesus ever prayed for someone or ministered to someone and uh, for, for some reason the, the metal turned into bone. That's unusual. And if you want to call it greater work, not that you know, we are competing with Jesus. No, that's not the question at all. But we're just saying the glory of God is displayed in incredible ways that are our mind, our finite mind cannot comprehend. Those are the greater works. Greater in extent, greater in quantity, unusual. Is there anything that our God cannot do? He has conquered Satan on the cross of Calvary and he's made a public spectacle of the enemy and all his works. Amen? And today we as God's people, we stand here and we say, greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. And we carry the power of the same Holy Spirit with us. And church, I want to encourage us. Let's press in to these greater works. And let's say, God, you said he who believes in me shall do the works that I do and even greater than these. And these, <clears throat> excuse me. So we can press in. And God's word, as we made our declaration, we said, He said, and it was established. God's word is established. He doesn't change His mind. When we believe, things take place. Amen. So, church, this morning, we're just going to take some time to pray and believe God for many of these greater works and I'd like to encourage uh, or request our pastors to please come and join me here um, to minister Pastor Selena here yeah. yeah Pastor Selena Pastor Ravi Pastor Paul Taina please come
there's nothing our god cannot do and he calls for us to have an intimate walk with him just the way jesus was in the bosom of the father you and i can have an intimate walk with the godhead second corinthians 13:14 it says the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit it's not the benediction yet just letting you know <laughs> but our fellowship with the godhead and it says communion koinonia or relationship with the holy spirit you know as we develop that relationship with the holy spirit these works will begin to flow being empowered by the baptism in the holy spirit is crucial to releasing the greater works because we see that you know the 120 people jesus told them tarry just wait just wait once the holy spirit has come upon you after that you go to the works so it was when the holy spirit came upon them that you know they became these fiery witnesses for the kingdom and for jesus and having known all these things i think a very crucial thing for us is to just step out sometimes it's as simple as that lord i believe i know you will do something amazing you will bless this person that i'm ministering to just have a childlike faith and step out because as part of the great commission jesus said mark 16 was 17 and 18 i will read it for us and these signs will follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons they will speak with new tongues they will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly it will by no means hurt them they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover and it's talking about you and i that we will be able to move in all of this and minister god's power by faith these signs will follow those who believe by faith we will walk in these things so this morning we've looked at the fact that you know the lord jesus did good works he did the father's works it didn't stop with that but he commissioned us he commissioned his disciples then and now he commissions us to do greater works than what he did and as we have an intimate walk with the holy spirit we are empowered by the baptism in the holy spirit and we step out in faith we will see the glory of god so church what we're going to do right now is we will take some time in worship and i will request um the team to please lead so we'll take some time in worship uh, and after that uh, pastors and us i will come back and as the lord ministers any words of knowledge prophetic words that may be released through that we're going to minister to everyone um yeah so let's let's do that first so i want to request us to please rise to our feet and just begin to worship and honor the lord
God, Father, thank you that you haven't changed, oh God. I'm the Lord and I do not change. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. And Father, this morning, Lord, we thank you for your covenant. You said, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. I'm Jehovah Rapha, your healer. Father, we thank you. Because you said you are Jehovah Jireh, a provider. And Father, we look to you this morning, God, to do your works in the lives of your children. Lord, you are their rock, Lord. You are their shield. You are their mighty fortress. You are their strength, oh God. And Father, you promised in your word that they will not be put to shame. And so God, this morning, our eyes are fixed on you. And Father, you are the one who reveals your glory in the midst of your people, God. And Father, we pray that you will touch lives, God. That you would touch bodies and heal them, God. That, Lord, you would bring, Lord, a mighty deliverance, Father God, and work miracles. And Father, we ask, Lord, that these things take place in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus in the lives of your people. Just request our pastors to please go ahead if there's a word to come forward and minister. There's greater works than these, amen. I just want to uh, extend our faith this morning for uh, anyone who's, uh, who's been in a prolonged illness. Anyone who's... Uh, any of you who've um, had a prolonged illness, um, even if you want to stand on in behalf of a person uh, who's had a prolonged illness, maybe your relative, family, family member, someone whom you want to stand in behalf of, if you could raise your hand this morning, uh, if that's you or if it's, you know, you're standing in behalf of someone, uh, let's extend our faith this morning to, to experience and to expect the healing of, of the Lord. And I want to request those, uh, those of you who are around, uh, the folks who, are, who have raised their hands. You know, we, we want to practice this, right? We, we, we said that we want to experience, uh, you know, Jesus working through us. We labor with Jesus. So let's do that. Can we uh, extend, uh, can we pray uh, with these folks who have who've raised their hands and extend faith? Extend our faith. Cope co-labor with Jesus and declare the works of Jesus over their lives. Anyone who's experiencing a prolonged illness uh, or you're standing in behalf of those, those who are doing this. Uh, those of you who are watching us on, uh, uh, on, on, online, uh, please enter uh, in, in, uh, in, in the chat uh, and the others who are on chat, we, we request you to pray and support them. Can we do this this morning? Anyone who's, uh, if you can raise your hand a little higher uh, for those who, who need to see you and come, come near you and pray with you. Can we do that, church, this morning? Let's, let's be the hands, let's be the feet that Jesus wanted us to be. Let's extend that love, extend uh, the, the healing from the Lord this morning. Father, I thank you, O Lord. That you are the one who heals. And Lord, it is your desire, O oh God, that you want to pour out, you want to, you want to restore. You are the restorer, O oh Lord. We believe this morning. And we declare, O oh God, the works this morning. We declare your healing, O oh God, over these folks. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, O oh God. By your stripes, they are healed. We declare, Lord, we put your word over your people by your stripes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Just, just uh, 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 pray and uh, just you can, you can close in prayer. 
and just declare the works of the Lord over their lives. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Just pray for those who have uh, dislocated bones, bones that are broken, weak bones, uh, pain in the joints. And God wants to heal uh, people with this kind of condition. So if you know of people who in your families are suffering uh, with a dislocated bone or, uh, you know, broken bones or uh, weak bones, we just pray in faith for them, stand in faith. We just believe that uh, God is our healer. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, we speak healing over every dislocated bone, broken bone, pains in the joints, weak bones. We speak your supernatural strength in the mighty name of Jesus over their bones. We release your healing over their lives, Father God. We pray, God, that your healing will be manifested even as they, they, even as they believe in faith, God. We pray that their healing will come through, God. God. They will re receive their healing. They will rejoice, Father God. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just got an encourage word. You know, uh, I, I, I just felt this word. Some of us are thinking that uh, it is finished you know uh, you are in that state that everything is finished it could be related to your health it could be related to your finance it could be related to uh, any other situation you know you are facing at present so here is the word God says and he encourages that he can do even better and mighty thing for us let's not say that everything is finished no it is not finished so God is going to open an unusual doors for you believe that so you will see that you will experience that Lord I declare this in the name of Jesus Lord your people would see an unusual doors open for them Lord we pray, Lord. We believe that, Jesus. Lord, some of us are thinking, even worried. And we are in that position. We say, it is finished. No, Lord. We believe that, Lord, you will start everything new. Lord, we climb that, Jesus. We climb that, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We believe that, God. And also I am sensing that, you know, some of us are having an unusual emotional hurt. It could be, you know, you got hurt uh, by friends, families, even situations. Maybe what you are going through at present. You know, financial crisis that made you to have that hurt. Let's pray and ask the Lord. Lord, we believe that you are the God who makes us whole. So He takes away the hurts from our heart. Let's pray and ask the Lord. If you are going through that and unusual emotional hurt, ask the Lord. Lord, heal me, Lord. I'm sure many of us are facing that this is the time take this time and declare Lord heal me Lord deliver me Lord thank you so much God you are working on behalf of us you now we read God is with us he is still able to take out all of our an unusual emotion, emotional hurt from us, from our heart. Lord, we speak, Lord. We speak healing 
in the name of Jesus right now lord right now jesus right now father thank you jesus lord we will come out victorious thank you jesus lord you help us to live victorious life god thank you jesus lord we praise you god thank you jesus we exalt your name lord you alone are worthy to be praised lord thank you god thank you jesus thank you uh, i just sense that um at some homes there is a prodigal son story going on where there's a member of the family who's left the home physically or left or has just gone away from the faith if that's you the scripture that talks about how the lord will bring back the fathers to their sons the sons to their fathers and make them with one mind and one heart so if you're burdened about that just take courage hold on to that word because just like that story god just desires of you to stand with open arms open hands and receive with love when god brings back till then you stand in faith knowing that he will bring back the hearts of their fathers to their sons and the hearts of their sons to their fathers so let's just pray believing that lord i pray for every member of that home that's crying out to you for the life of that one person who's lost lord you came to save the lost you came to find us lord and father as we release your word into the lives of these lost members father we pray that you bring back lord by the power of your spirit by the promise of your word father and lord that you will hasten it you will speed in it father thank you god we receive what you have spoken lord we just pray god that hearts will melt will mend father right now lord that forgiveness would be released in a mighty way no matter what the hurt is no matter what the what the exit was father lord the members at home will receive with open arms lord you have received us and god give us the grace to receive that member that's lost lord we speak we believe in jesus name amen amen i just want to pray for people who've been suffering with spondylitis if it's any one of us you just want to pray it's been probably a couple of years you've been suffering with that pain um maybe because of additional work or extra hours of work we just want to speak healing over those who are going through that father in the name of jesus we just speak over those of us maybe who are going through this pain on the neck that constant twitching pain on the nerves on the neck we pray lord in the name of jesus we just declare the power of your healing presence upon their lives right now in the name of jesus we just declare god as you said and as we heard of god that you just call forth things oh lord you're a god who works miracles and right now lord we just declare every pain to be gone in jesus name by your stripes lord they are healed they don't have to stay and and deal with that pain for longer lord right now in the name of jesus we just declare healing of god we thank you lord we receive receive it in jesus name in the name of jesus we receive that healing lord thank you father it's another thing even as pastor ravi was ministering i just saw that maybe some of us are in this transition uh, a, a time of of change you've been expecting probably at work or even in the family a, a season of transition and every time a door opens it just closes back maybe if it's any one of us oh i just felt that this is what the lord 
wants to minister to each of us that Isaiah 40 verse 31 says those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength amen so those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and even as we declare this maybe you're going through this transition you're looking at the doors they're just closing every time I just want to encourage us to trust in this word which says Lord we will wait on you we will wait on you and we will know that you are leading us so father we just speak for those who are in this situation right now those who are going through or waiting in the spirit of transition we just speak for lord the strength of god the wisdom of god lord that lord holy spirit that you will minister and lord you will speak a oh god in their hearts that you will lead them through a oh god through every season even the season of waiting a oh god it will not be a wasted time but it'll be a time of preparation for the things ahead in their lives a oh god we just thank you god we thank you lord that lord that there will be no discouragement that they will shut off every voice of the enemy of oh god and they will look to you we will look to you for strength oh lord we thank you jesus we just declare this lord in jesus name Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for what you're doing, the lives of your people. Father, we give you praise, God. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. This time, I'd just like to take a moment to give an invitation for those who have only heard about this Jesus, his goodness, his great works, but never really ask this Jesus to change their lives. I want to give an invitation for you to ask this Jesus to come into your life, to forgive your sins and make you a new person because only he can. Amen. And so if there's anyone here, you're saying, I've never done that before and I want to do that today, then I want you to pray together with me. Just repeat this prayer together with me and say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for loving me. Forgive me, God. Lord, I come to you. I give my life to you. Work in me and help me to live as your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you've prayed that prayer, you know, we're excited for you because the Word of God says even if one person receives the Lord Jesus, the heavens rejoice. Amen. And so we rejoice together with you. And if you uh, don't mind, if you want to put up your hand and tell us that you've made that decision, that would be great. We have our volunteers here who would like to hand over a, a new believers packet to you. Is there anybody who's made that decision today? Even online? Okay, there's, there's somebody here. God bless you. Oh, praise God. Can we clap? Praise God. Wonderful. God bless you. God bless you. Please do meet with our volunteers and, you know, they would love to talk with you and give you more resources and uh, tell you about how you can grow in the Lord. If there are any more uh, people on the chat, you know, you've made that decision, please do let us know and we would love to uh, get in touch with you and help you grow in your walk with the Lord. Uh, once again, I just want to thank everyone for being here. Also, um, Prakriti and the team, Premanan, thank you so much, and the worship team. Uh, it's been a great celebration coming together. Uh, and, you know, amen. Praise God. Praise God. So I'm just going to pray and close for this morning. We're already a little over time. Uh, but then our pastors will be around.
If anyone needs prayer, please come. We're here to pray those believing prayers and continue to trust God for mighty things to happen in the lives of people. So let's just pray and close this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we pray, God, that by the power of your spirit, Lord, your word will stir up your people. And God, we pray that there will be a great arising as every son of God, every daughter of God steps out by faith, Lord, and walks in the greater works that God has assigned for them. And thank you, God. Thank you for moving us forward. It is by the power of your spirit, Lord. And Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.